Gertrude. Mm hmm. Hi, welcome to TFLP Microcasters. Christian, you were so, we were so close to getting you. Uh... I don't do it anymore. I tie myself now. Yeah. I even give you, you a countdown. You haven't been able to trick me in like six months, man. I, I give you a countdown. I try to say weird stuff. So... Do we get do we get Paul's weird mm hmm at the end? I don't know. We'll have, to, we'll have to go back no, and see. Well, so... He did it. It was cool. Yeah, so welcome to Microcasters. We got a special guest uh, this week. We got uh, Paul over here. Hey, I think because you guys don't have the toys, is that right? That, that's right. So Christian and I decided that that uh, we were not going to uh, collect Cyberverse trash, and so and so we had to. Uh, so Anna has been jonesing for some new plastic. And so she picked it, picked it up, and then Paul's crazy and you know collects everything or something. I don't know. So. No, I have limits. No, I, I actually kind of these have actually been more anticipated for me than other stuff that's coming out. Like you guys are all excited about your seat accounts, and I just have zero poops to give about those. Other than saying that we're all to annoy Christian, that brings me. That's the only joy. reason you do it, isn't it? <laughs> It is. I love it. But anyway, I, I don't understand how you could be like not excited for Seacons, but not yet, at all. but yet you're like, oh hey, look, it's the like fiftieth Optimus figure, like, and it's probably the tenth Optimus figure just in Cyberverse. Like, I'm so excited for that. It's more fun to play with than those are. It's good eagles. I mean, th this is definitely the best one. And red. Well, it is it took, the best one. I'll it, it give took you them fifteen. Yeah. It took them fifteen to get it right, but you know, here we are. Yeah. So. All right, so let's let's be efficient tonight because I'm going to take charge to make us be efficient. So we're going to start by talking about a toy truck. So tonight we are going to talk about two Cyberverse Deluxe figures. And in case you guys don't know, the Cyberverse Deluxe figures are basically like deluxe figures in every other line they're roughly the same size roughly the same complexity they're just something that cyberverse didn't have until recently cyberverse all had all these gimmicky figures and kid-friendly figures and whatever and these are you know boasting 20 plus steps of transformation and more complexity detail and paint more like other deluxe figures so you know they're the first thing to actually get me kind of interested in the line, other than unique characters that I keep buying garbage figures of, like Clover, which is not a good toy, but I have it. Um, so the first wave had Optimus, Bumblebee, Shockwave, and somebody else, um, Megatron, that's Megatron. right. Yep. Um, I always forget Megatron, he's just not a very important character. And therefore, you know... I didn't really want most of the first wave just because it was characters that, you know, I have otherwise, and I try to not really collect that many repeats unless they're unique versions. So I actually think owning that Bumblebee would be just fine because he's a very different character than other Bumblebees, but eh, whatever. I kind of don't love him. Christian has him, though, so that's great. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about one of the Wave 1 characters, which is the Optimus which personally I'm holding in my hand right now. He's a very normal looking truck mode for an Optimus. Paul has his robot mode at the same time to kind of show off both of them. Um, I'm going to say, I'm just going to start us off by talking about the truck mode and say that it's okay. <laughs> what do you think, Paul, as an overall judgment of the truck mode? Sorry, I was muted. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's very animation accurate. And, like, you know, that's ultimately kind of the goal with most toys. I mean, like, as a collector, I think that's kind of what you're going for. Like, if it looks like it's stepped off the screen, then, like, secondary, it's like, is it the greatest transformation in toy ever? It, that, I mean, I'm just kind of making that up right now. But I think I feel like that's the way it should go. This, this does look like... It does look like it's what it's supposed to. Yeah. It looks like the animation model. It does not look like a real truck. Um, it, it reminds kind me of animated. Like... Yeah, yeah, it really yeah, does. It does. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, it definitely reminds me of animated. Have you guys a ever seen animated? 
Doesn't just look anything reminds like it. us of it is exactly the same. Like I said before, Christian, I'm putting my Cyberverse figures with the animated, and they blend in pretty well, other than the plastic. It. Okay. I mean, it doesn't look the same. <laughs> it's just it looks like it's kind of in the same vein, I guess. But they could be cousins from another planet in the animated verse. Yeah, it's kind of like the Cybertron, the 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 Cybertronian mode versus the Earth mode, maybe. Sure, that works. That sounds like an explanation that's wrong, and we can just move on. So, (laughs) like this is, you know, as Paul said, animation accurate. It doesn't look great. It it's gappy in places. You can tell it's a transformer. You know, there's holes in the top and. The back is just arms, and, you know, it's what you would expect from a cheaper, smaller Optimus figure, honestly. Um, it's pretty par for the course in this mode. The robot mode is very impressive, but the the truck mode is just, it's all right. It does the job. It does what it has to, and nothing more. Well, I mean, the, the worst part is probably, like, under the... Under the shoulders, you know, there's this big gap here. But I mean, I, I've played with a lot of the other Cyberverse Optimuses, and yes. this one's definitely, it's, it's just the best as far as everything goes. Yeah, for sure. It definitely stands above the other Cyberverse figures. Now, can you get a better Optimus in general? Of course you can. Course. There are there are a bunch of better Optimi. Can you get a better? Right? <laughs> Or that thing, Lucas says, I it's think, the best thing ever. I think my my issue with these figures, just in general, is like the fact that they're twenty dollars. Like, I think if they did a Walmart special, like how Walmart's doing with the regular deluxes and reducing the regular deluxes down to twelve, like I think if these were fifteen dollars, I would feel better about them than if they're 20 and so like my whole issue is is that like and the reason i don't have it i actually have a couple of these cyberverse figures is it's like once i get it, it's like you know i could have bought a like a siege figure or an earthrise figure and i think that those figures are a little bit better like the quality on those to me is better and so it's like why am i wasting my money on on this so like on the ones like, I almost wish with these deluxes, instead of them making, you know, the regular characters, that they would make the off-the-wall characters in, in these. Because, like, I'm more interested in, like, the Rack and Ruin and, and some of the crazy stuff that they are doing than, you know, another yet another Optimus that I don't need. Yes. Yet yeah, another. And, and with the show ending, it's like... They aren't really going to... These eight deluxes are probably it. Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. It's supposed to end in season three or four. Yeah, season three. However, however... And these weren't, like, revealed until after this announcement, but I don't... So I don't know if it's related or not, but there's that whole Chinese version of Cyberverse with all the Neza... The, the right. Transformers Neza thing. That's like 32 episodes of of unique content that is not season one, two, or three. And I do not understand how that's going on. And I wonder I wonder if the, they I wonder if they decided to make these to kind of like cross between both brands and give the Chinese audience like some higher quality figures. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That, that's a These are higher know. quality figures. That's an interesting theory. And if that's the case, maybe they'll make some more in the Chinese market and they'll trickle out in the United States, maybe. By the way, can we get delu- like Cyberverse Deluxes or whatever, like these types of figures with the Build-A-Figure of Rescue Bots Academy? That'd be cool. That'd be great. Because I think sure, I that would wish. actually be really cool to actually get highly articulated versions of the uh, of all those char- of the original rescue bots characters and the the newer rescue bots academy the you know whatever the new the new ones new hotshot yay so back to this guy um as 
So anybody who is watching, and if you're not watching, I just transformed mine in the last minute or two. It's a really simple Optimus transformation. It's not really, there's no real surprises other than, unlike a lot of Optimuses, Optimi, Optimizers, um, there is no fake chest. It's all his real chest, right? Like it's the, the truck front kind of folds a bit, turns into the chest. I appreciate that because there's been a lot of Optimuses I've owned that don't do that. And I like it when they do. They just seem a little bit cooler, more like Transformers when they do that. And sometimes fake car parts are cool, sometimes they're not. Um, overall, like the figure itself is, like, I, it's just really hard to complain about this thing in bot mode. And as I said earlier, there's a lot of good optimuses, but there's really not anything wrong with it, right? Like it's got good articulation, it's got ankle tilt, it's got wrist swivel because they're on ball joints instead of being the the parts that completely turn to go in, they're just on a ball joint, so they fold like that, which to me is way better. To other people, is not as good because they do get floppy over time um, from being ball joints like that, but it's cool. That's what The head is, is on a ball, right? Just keep applying it whenever you need to. The head's on a ball. The um, As long as you don't mind the kind of busy arms, there's not a whole lot of empty space. There's not a whole lot of, um, what do we call it, gaps. But on the back, of course, the legs are hollow but it doesn't look bad i mean it seems like the arms clean up pretty well the arms are cool so that's good i mean it's not too he kind of it looks like he kind of has gorilla arms a little bit but a little bit but it's kind of like he's supposed to right it's part of the character model he's a little gorilla ish so he can gorilla around and wrestle and whatnot weapon storage on the back yeah paul actually has his weapon Unlike every other Cyberverse figure that I own, he actually comes with a weapon. Yeah, and they also come with the ba- the blast effects, which are pretty dope. For, yeah, for that does actually look cool. neat. See, I mean, I, I don't. I see this as pretty congruent with the Earthrise Deluxes, especially now. As de- Deluxe means parts count is higher, which is why the that's really where the price comes from. And they're sticking with, you know, they're really leaning into the blast effect thing. Yep. Which, I mean, actually, the Cyberverse blast effects are are <coughs> totally, totally different than the the War for Cybertron ones. But they're like, um, in certain ways, you could say they're better. They're just, they're, they're, they're just they're different. They're way they're, sturdier. They're, they're way more cartoony. They it's are. Just, it's cool. I mean, the one thing I'll say about these toys is, is I feel like... If I have, you know, like say I have an eight-year-old, right? And I feel like I could get these toys for an eight-year-old and he could transform it now and enjoy it now, but then he can also enjoy it like in a couple years or, or, you know, down the road. Like it's something to where I I feel like that the Cyberverse line and R.I.D. and a lot of those have been tough just because a lot of them, it's like, oh, well, this is obviously made for kids and they're made for smaller children to where it does not have the level of articulation that we as collectors would want. Whereas like this actually, you know, has it. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like almost like ages six or, you know, whatever, five or six all the way up to, you know, adult on on this, which is kind of nice to, uh, to have that just because, I mean, there's, there's so many of the, of the generations figures that my kid just can't, you know, he can't transform. Just, you know, they're too complex for his age. I would like to say something about the blast effects since we were talking about that too. These blast effects, especially, you know, the ones you're showing and then this one on B that I got today, I like them way more than the Earthrise and Siege ones. I mean, they're cartoony, so they go with the cartoony figure. I think the blast effects on anything in Generations look really bad. I think they look dumb. I I put them in a box as soon as I get them. I never slay them a figure because I think they look really bad. This looks really cool because it looks like he walked out of a cartoon. Maybe when the Netflix show comes out for Siege, I'll feel differently. But as of right now, I I hate blast effects on, you know, adult figures. Some of them are pretty cool. No, none of them are cool at all. Okay. (laughs) Some of them I don't mind. I kind of like them. But they... You're right that they just don't quite look right. I think you kind of hit it on the nose that these are cartoony, so they have weird blast effects. They have cartoon plasma, poo, but then those more serious-looking figures don't have that stuff, and it, it makes more sense for them not to. 
Um, one thing I really want to say about this figure is that, like, there are a lot of really good articulated deluxes out there these days, but this thing is super good for posing. Like, just, he poses very, very well and can do some really fun stuff. I should post some pictures later of the fun kind of poses I can put him in. He's just, he's small, he's skinny, he's relatively clean, so he can do a lot of cool poses. And it makes him actually fun to play with. Plus, he can hold his blast effect, which I don't have in my hands right now, with like an ice cream cone, and eat it. So, hey, what I've always wanted. Does he have fists, or does he have open hands? He has fists with holes in them. Nice. Um, quick, quick, run in the chat. A lot, a lot of return to that. Um, Ron in the chat is asking whether or not the blast effects work with the War for Cybertron figures. Some can, because they have, uh, they're like five millimeter, and then they also, some of them can clip onto those little, um, what, the War for Cybertron pegs, I guess. Let me, let me mm-hmm. grab one and see if it works. Yeah, I can just show. I've got one in my hands, Paul. Okay. So. Oh, there you go, yeah. Like, they are made where this would peg into a hole on a Cyberverse figure, but it also has a hole inside of it, so that can go on the Earthrise Blast Effect peg. It's a little loose, but if it's okay. Sweet. And it, it works okay. On the painted ones, it stays really well, and on the unpainted ones, it doesn't stay as well. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, because, like, like Bumble- you can have such a bizarre on fire. So, like, Bumblebee here has a peg on the chest that would be like a, a War for Cybertron peg that you'd use for blast effects. So I think the intention is that they're interchangeable. But of course, Bumblebee's blast effect only works on this stinger thing. So his is very non-compatible. He's going to have a stingy stain. Yeah, so anyway, um, I, I honestly think that the Optimus is like... Like everyone said, you don't need another Optimus in your collection, probably. You probably have enough. I actually only have one right now. So, I have two. I have my Legends and my MP size. So, I mean, I guess this is my third for now. Um, If I decide he is enough of a different character, I'll keep him. If I decide he's the same character, I'll dump him. Probably going towards dumping. um, Just because I don't collect more than one of the same character. But I actually think he's really good. Like, he's really fun to play with. And, you know, it's a fun fiddle figure, even though his truck mode kind of sucks. So I think he was more or less worth it. Especially if he goes cheaper than 20 But for even in 20 I think he's cool. See, I don't know. For me, like, I like characters that kind of go together. And so, like, I would want a bunch of the animation accurate. Like, like it almost appeals to me to pick this up just so I can have an Optimus that's uh, Cyberverse or whatever for the show if that makes sense. Like, it wouldn't... Like, I wouldn't want to display this with all my other stuff. I'd want a Cyberverse shelf, essentially. These do not display well with Earthrise and Siege figures. They just don't look right together. There's just something about the way the plastic is crafted on the figures that when you stand them side by side, they just don't look right. It's just... It's different. It's like... The whole idea of a very different red on these two, even though they might should be different reds, it just feels like a very different look somehow. It's hard to put into words, but that's why I'm showing Cliff Jumper beside Optimus right now. And hopefully people see what I'm talking about. If not, you can just say, oh, Anna's crazy, and that's all right. Fine with that. Paul, you're muted. You told us all about him, though. Thanks. Trying to be polite. Um, I don't know if this is a relevant thing for microcasters. I don't know if you do this stuff, but like here is like the Optimus from the the last Cyberverse line with the add-on armor and stuff, and then the deluxe next to it. Like these are about the same size, but this one was. God, I think that. Do you remember how much these were at retail, Christian? I think they're thirty. I thought that was no. 25. 25 or 30. 25. Yeah, I think, I think it was 25. 25 is right. And I mean, these, these, you can, this has got a bunch of armor on it, but like, it's night and day. Like, this is clearly the better toy by, by all accounts. And, um, 
this is, this is just I think this is just the culmination of uh, that brand. So everything Anna said is is right. I mean, this is a super articulated one, and compared to some of the other ones, they don't all have these. I don't think any of the other deluxes have the wrists on ball joints like this, Anna. They don't. They They're don't. All and I wish eggs. they did. Yeah. Um, the wrist on ball joints is such a good idea. The only me. the the one thing that really kind of puts me off uh, too with these figures is just the the plastic. Like so, these figures definitely use the Cyberverse plastic. So if like if you felt that before, it's different than what they use for their Generations line. So I'm not sure, like, what what plastic they use, but I just, I, I don't like the feel of it myself. For me personally. It's, like, slightly have, gummier. Yeah. Yeah. If you have high-quality um, KOs, like Wei Zhang figures, it's a very similar plastic to what that's made of. It's, like, just a step below what we're used to but still perfectly fine it's not brittle it's not going to break it's not going to degrade it just doesn't have that same like feel as the plastic we're used to the biggest problem for me is just the colors just look different i mean i would say it's probably i think it's less dense and i think that's why the the colors aren't quite the same yeah i I mean I, i probably wouldn't say it's like that the plastic is like worse it's really just, I mean, I'm sure they probably go with a more flexible plastic since it's more of a kid's line. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, you'd rather them not break. Um, sure. So, I, I'm sure that's probably part of the reason they do that. So, I'll take that these guys, had, these guys had described the, the Cyberverse plastic on these as really bad to me before. And so I got Bumblebee today, so he's new to me today. And I was worried that he would feel like the shampoo bottle plastic we've been getting on, you know, crappier figures no it's not it's definitely not that i was very happy to see it yeah it's definitely far from terrible it's they're not bad at all yeah like rob makes fun of it he's like oh you can see through it i'm like shut up man this is actually a good toy can you no not really (laughs) if you like stick a light behind it like a really strong Mm -hmm. light sure yeah same thing with like Mm -hmm. alternator tracks you know like that's, it's just yellow. That's just how it works. It's a light pigment. Well, it's not yellow in alternators, but you know that. Well, he was going to be, but they didn't he make was him gonna yellow be, but they didn't because, because they could see that, through yes. him. <laughs> but they did right. Streaker somehow. Yeah, imagine that. Yeah, weird. I think the, the paint... That? Did you mention the paint, Anna? Because the paint I didn't apps are like... The paint. You mentioned the paint. They're, I mean, the paint apps are like all over this thing, too. Yeah, they're and good. There's, there's a variety of yeah. They're not messy at all. Like it's actually, I I, I never seem to have this problem, but I hear from a lot of people with like G- generations toys that the face paint looks bad, or there's blemishes, or there's splotches and stuff. I mean, this is pretty impeccable paint, especially the matrix in the chest. Like that's a pretty complex paint app. Can you um, show the matrix a little bit closer? I thought I saw that earlier. It looked cool. Actually, now that I'm like really looking at it, I w- it almost looks like they like double painted it. Yeah, they did. Okay, so there's three paint apps here. They painted the Matrix silver, and I think they painted that whole section in there. Then the the spots that in between the handles, I think they painted red over the silver, and then Ooh. inside it's blue. The whole thing inside is blue. So that's three paint apps just for that. That's great. The face looks yeah, great. Okay. The eyes look great. I mean, there's like, like, let me see if I can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven. Each window has, f- Jesus, five. I mean, there's like at least 20, 20 plus paint apps on this thing. <laughs> Although I don't know what counts for a paint app versus a Tampa graph these days, because like the Autobot Neither. symbols are clearly Tampos. But um, I don't know. It's just they they. That's another reason why it's probably at the deluxe price point, is yeah. they they went all out. I mean, could they have done more? Of course, they could have like painted the hubcaps on the wheels, or, or hey, at least they went with tampos and paint? not and not crappy stickers. How many did you count, Paul? <laughs> I mean, I'm not like I'm not really sure what counts as an individual paint app, but I was like, when I got to the, I was looking at one of the windows, which they might do those together instead of separately, but, like, there's a silver one, two black ones, two blue ones on each window. 
So I got to 28, not counting the Autobot symbols on B. Yeah. Well, I was looking at him when I realized there were so many. And it's I, a lot. And you're right. It's it's not spotty. It's it's really precise. Like I'm, yeah, I'm impressed now that I'm looking at it specifically for that. Quite good. So I think the only reason not to get this Optimus is that it's Optimus. That's my conclusion. So do we still want to talk? I mean, we advertise about Hot Rods, so we have to talk about them, right? Yeah, yeah, you're burying the lead. Yeah. Flamey boy. We're doing what? Burying you're bur- burying the lead. What does that mean? It's the best figure. Oh, okay. Eh, I, mean, I guess. You, you, we reeled people in with Hot Rod, and then we like didn't talk about it till the end. Yes. Yeah. We switched with Optimus. We made and switched them. I gotcha. It's, it's like putting the cover story of you know Taylor Swift on the front of the magazine and then putting it on page 150. So, Hot Rod and Grimlock are the two new ones that are showing up in the second wave, right? Are they in separate waves? They're, they're both in the second wave because Thunder Howl and RC are in separate waves. It's ridiculous to spread about eight figures that way. Anyway, first wave is four figures. Second wave is two repeats and then Hot Rod and Grimlock. And we're talking about Hot Rod tonight who is right here. And he is exactly what you see. He is a very rectangular car. That is very blocky. Wow. He's very red. The reddest red that ever redded. That's actually a pretty neat looking car mode. Like I really it like really I really like the uh paint applic the blue paint application on the wheels. Like I think if they would have just okay. went black, it would have looked it wouldn't have looked as good. Like I think the fact that they did that, like and it almost kind of replicates I'm a, I'm assuming his wheels when he's going through the show spark blue or something like that, right? Or probably, probably. Do you know who the Paul? You probably know off the top of your head. Um, Rodimus is asking on the Discord who the other two figures in Wave Two are. Optimus and Bumblebee. Optimus and Bumblebee. See, we're pretty much talking about almost all of Wave Two. Look at us. We're special. We did it. Good job. Just leaving Grimoire as a forget those Decepticons. Oh, tempter! Right, it's the it's the Autobot wave, and then Wave Three will also be mostly the Autobot wave. Anyway, um, anywho, so yeah, that's what he looks like. He's not so like he might have as much paint applications as Optimus, but it just leaves a lot of red. And if you look at the show model. There's a lot of parts that are not red that are not represented on this figure. So he's just like, he is the toy in my possession right now that is most yelling at me to just go get some paint in a small brush and put a few details on. Like that just, because it's a really good toy, it just needs a little more color to break up all of the, the red, the red followed by red beside red beside another red part in a red part. A lot of red. It's definitely like the the reddest toy I've ever seen. It's so (laughs) red. It's also a brighter red than most reds, right? Like again, I know Clip Jumper is not a bright red at all, but the contrast is pretty strong. Yeah, it like has quite a bit of yellow in it, you know. So it's I'm not saying it's orange, but it's like a very flamey red, and it's not quite the same red as Optimus either. I refer to this as an orange toy because it feels orange to me, even though it doesn't have a lot of orange on it. So, yeah, that's the car mode. It's pretty It's pretty okay. Like like Lucas said, it's actually a good car. It just doesn't have enough detail on it. It's, it's very rectangular, but sometimes cars are rectangular. It's really fine. It just could really stand to have more colors than just red. And, you know, the, the black windshield and the blue headlights and the, the pretty blue wheels. They are pretty blue wheels. And then do you want to lead on talking about the bot mode, Paul? Since you well, before, bot mode? Yeah, Go ahead. before we get to sorry, I was trying to transform this awful toy to show Lucas how bad it would look without the blue wheels. Because this is the ultra version. Oh. <laughs> it yeah. is just pretty rough. Looks like a coffin. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty rough. 
It's yeah. It's it's show the underside. He's laying. In, he's lying in state. Well, this is how those yeah. one step transformers go. You know, they don't actually do anything. I, you know, Paul, I love how you're like before. You're like, I don't collect everything, and then you're like, here's this pile of crap, like ultra version. Yeah, but this is hot rod. I collect hot rod, yeah. so I have all the crap to go along with hot rod. I don't have <laughs> clobber. I don't have. Slipstream, you know, I just have these yeah. guys. I have both I, of those. It, They're it both could, terrible. It could be worse. So, like, back <laughs> in the day, right? Like, say that you, like, made your decision on what to collect, right? And you're like, man, if you would have decided on Bumblebee, like, however many years ago instead of Hot Rod, like, your collection would be a lot larger. Why do you think I have this? Oh, wait, do you collect Bumblebee too? Because I know <laughs> yeah, I you mean, Starscream that... and Grimlock, and it's like, well, at this point, are you really just... <laughs> like, it sounds like you're collecting everything by the time you... <clears throat> you know, if you want to you you, use... Dissect my collection <laughs> habits as a as a episode of TFYLP someday, I'm happy to do that. Because it would take a whole episode. <laughs> but, uh... So <laughs> let's, let's go to the red guy. So all the things we've been saying about these toys it made me think like R- Rodimus really is, and you kind of said this already and Rodimus really is lacking paint apps compared to the other really ones. because like these orange thighs actually are great but they only go halfway around the piece I don't oh. understand why because right. like this this toy would would benefit from a lot more of that like that if the elbow if yeah, the elbows could be orange, or like something on the forearms could be orange. That would be great, but there isn't. We do have the flame, you know, the flame tampo on the front, which is great because that's kind of required for Hot Rod and the the leg stuff that Anna's also showing. Yep. So, like, is know. this I, the figure that they like put the le- less money in? Like, they put more money into like another figure and then took it out of this one, or what? I kind of feel that way. I kind of feel Possibly. like you like it could be that because I just feel like this figure is so close to being super duper good. Like it really is. Like if it had more paint apps and it didn't have the giant chunk over the hands, you know, just one more hinge on here so that his hands could be revealed. I think that this this is actually still, I've realized lately, somehow I've ended up with like seven hot rod toys. I really got to fix that. It's getting disgusting in here. I can literally reach over and hold up two more. Like here's, here's the Rodimus. And here's the Who are here's you? Hot rod. <laughs> and oh, oh, look at this. Look, look, it's, it's another Rodimus. <laughs> I'll buy that one from you. <laughs> very me. upsetting. Yeah. It's very upsetting. <laughs> um, to have this many. So I gotta fix it. But this guy's actually kind of one of the harder ones to play with. He's actually pretty cool. Don't you think that the, the back thing should have paint at least? Like the, the you know the, the wing? Yeah, the wing thing. Um no. That doesn't feel like paint to me. Mm. I don't know. I was looking up um I was looking up character art of him earlier and trying to figure out just how much paint I'll have to put on this thing to make it accurate. Um, and it's it's actually quite a lot <laughs> to make him fully accurate because it's like his um, crotch section here and most of the like waist leading into the top of the chest that should all be different colors. There's black in there. There's blue in there. There's dark gray in there. It's not just red. Um, the shoulders, the little holes in the shoulders that are black, should actually be blue. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. It's just, like, he's just not appropriately painted, which is so strange when, like, yeah. we said, Optimus gets such attention to paint. And um, what Paul said earlier about, like, the faces being reliably pretty good, the f- I really do like the face sculpt on this guy. The paint on mine is far from perfect. It's a little bit sloppy, but I really do like the way the face looks. Like, it's just, uh, apparently I own a lot of Hot Rod toys, and most of them I kind of don't like, so... <laughs> Yeah, and I actually feel like this has some character to it, if it that really makes does. sense. Yeah. If I could improve a few th- I mean, uh, if I could improve a few things, it would just be like, I wish this panel at the bottom 
split in half and curled under the bottom of his arm like Optimus like Optimus's arms kind of do. That would be great. Yeah, because Optimus's arms are not perfect, right? Like he's got a little bit of underhane under the fist, but he doesn't have this giant chunk blocking the entire hand. Yeah. Well, I mean, how else? How else are they going to have the pipes shooting out past his his fist like Wolverine? You know, they're not going to have three individual pipes. Those would break like so quickly. And that is that is a good point. That the first time you showed this figure off to me, you had it like this with the flames in bot mode with the flames on his arms. And that, if I can get him in. That actually makes it look a lot better somehow. Like, he just suddenly has weapon mode arms, right? Like, he's ready to have fire hands or something. It just really helps to display him like that. So it makes up for the arms. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like we're disappointed in this guy, but, I mean, I still think this is, a, think is an amazing toy. Like, if, I mean, as totally far as... I like it. I mean, I'm just, I mean, compared to this, you know, like, this is what I got before. You're right about that. Want to talk about bricks? I could break a window with this thing. (laughs) That he has. Not really. Maybe. No, I haven't. Yeah, so, um, he has good articulation. Like, he has the the ankles, um, his legs are well articulated. His arms are actually not bad, even though they have giant shoulders. Like, they only go up this far. But they do rotate all the way around, and you can get a lot of poses out of them. Well, he's got he's also got the double jointed elbow, which is right. actually pretty pretty unique. For you know, for not, um, toys have it, but not a lot do. Double jointed elbow like that, it can be pretty cool. He can pose. He poses pretty well, actually. He does a lot of cool uppercuts and whatnot. So whatever. Um, the things he's lacking is that his waist swivel is clogged because this backpack thing pegs into his um, butt. And therefore, you can't really swivel his waist if he's transformed right. If you mistransform him a little bit, he can swivel. But if you want that backpack pegged in correctly, he can't very much. Um, and then the other thing that's hindered is he actually does have completely rotating wrist. They're, they're rotating wrists. They just uh, happen to be blocked. So it's like he has all the articulation you would want. You just can't access some of it. Got to pay for DLC. (laughs) Right. Yeah, you would need a lot of DLC. An entire lower arm would have to be replaced. So Rain on the chat had mentioned about uh, toy hacks. Like, do they actually make toy hacks uh, stickers for Cyberverse? I think someone just has to submit it to them. There you go. Yeah, because you were mentioning yeah, the paint apps, like, wouldn't be bad to have a, a sticker set for this. Yeah. I'm not sure if you can make enough stickers to fix this thing. I feel like it just really needs paint. And, but I see that, again, like, I actually do like the figure, and I think it feels good, I think it transforms good, I think it's a good toy, I just think that it has some flaws. I would, um, I would honestly, in hand, I don't consider these things to feel cheap. I know um, Lucas has mentioned the plastic filling kind of cheap. Other people kind of see them as like, you know, less quality, less for your money type of thing. I don't at all. I took a little bit of time. Like, I almost said a lot of time, but it was more like 10 minutes to compare it to a couple of my um, Siege and Earthrise toys. And I feel like they're entirely comparable. Like, they just, they're different designs. They're from entirely different design methodologies, different animation styles, different looks. But I feel like they're equivalent. I agree. A little bold. I'm willing to say it. Well, well I mean, it's something, something you said earlier, Lucas, was you're like, oh, I want to see the, I want to see the rescue bots done like this. Well, you have an affinity to the rescue bots, so that's why you care. You, you don't watch the Cyberverse show. You don't care. You, you would rather it didn't exist. So that's where. No, 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 no. When did I ever say comes. that? No, no, no. I, I just have not watched all of. I'm, I'm trying to get through and watch it with my kids. So, yes, I don't have the same affinity to that that I do the Rescue Bots because I watched Rescue Bots with my kids when they were younger, so. 
Well, an, in your favor, I would say these are just rehashes of characters we've gotten a million times where yeah. the rescue bots are their own, almost all their own thing. Right. You know? Which so, is cool. The, and they st- those characters, as they exist, still are like stuck in a world that has never been in a like generation quality toy toy line. Right, and 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 I think again, like if I had, um, you know, like if slip they did slipstream or something in this, I actually think I I would be excited for that because I don't have uh, a, a slipstream, you know. So I think some of that kind of stuff. Like I just wish that, you know, and I, obviously they're picking the main characters. I mean, the main characters sell better. But, you know, I think it would have been cool to do some of the the weirdo in the highly articulated line. I would love for there to be a slipstream and a shadow striker and a bunch of people who aren't going to get figures in the scale, but that's okay. Well, I mean, never never say never because, like I said, there's maybe some weird Hail Mary is going to come through in China and maybe, like, there's a whole other eight deluxes coming through. Because if they're going through the... Trouble to make a build a figure makes me think that they're not going to make just one. Like they might do a different build a figure that's like Super McAdam or something, well, or a giant Scraplet. Who knows? Or Quintesson. To me, I feel like okay. So they rebranded this like Bumblebee Cyberverse or whatever, right? Like I'm sure that they're going to have another show that has a similar style to this that is going to be the next kid show. You know what I mean? So it's like it. I don't think it'll be too far off the mark between these and, and whatever they create in a year or two from now. I have one more point to make. So Siege and Earthrise have spoiled us with um with Skell. Like everything is too Skell. These deluxe figures say to hell with Skell. Who cares? Everyone is the same size. Because these two are roughly the same size. Grimlock is roughly the same size. Bumblebee is roughly the same size. They're all roughly the same size. Well, that's why you're supposed to start dabbling into those other size classes. Those horrible size classes. Yeah. Yeah, so they're they're all the same size. And last point I want to make is the Build-A-Figure which I do not have enough to even, like, approximately put them together. I have two lower arms and a leg. Um, the build of the figure actually feels like it's much lower quality than the figure it came with, which is strange to me because every other build of figure that I've had a couple pieces of, like, I've had a couple Marvel Legends over the years of build of figure parts, and it always feels like this premium thing that I want to finish because it's going to look giant and cool and threatening. And this feels like this anti-premium thing that's going to look small and flimsy and badly colored and half-painted and missing ankle tilt. It's just going to be like a McAdam that isn't as good as his friends, even though he's super cool, special, powerful, whatever. It's a bummer. Originally, I was going to buy them for the Build-A-Figure. Now I'm probably going to finish the Build-A-Figure, thanks to help with parts from my friends, um, but I'm not doing it to finish the builder figure. I'm just doing them because I like the toys. Well, now that you bring it up, I, w- I wonder if how much of the twenty dollar price point is the build a figure part? You know, so like Lucas, maybe these are the fifteen dollar price point, but they're re- they're able to squeeze more out of it with the build a figure to get it to twenty. Got a leg. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, this McAdam isn't even worth twenty dollars. Let's just face it. I mean, I think it's it. It's cool that they're trying something. You know what I mean? Like, I I don't mind that they're doing this as a one off thing, and then like, you know, if it works or doesn't work or or whatever. Um, you know. I just wish he wasn't bad. I just like like I wanted a McAdam figure after I saw him in the cartoon. I was like, ooh, that's a fun character, especially for a kids show to have this like you know sagely time distorting fun character for kids to wrap your their brains around. He was cool. I liked him. I was thinking that would be a cool thing to have a toy, and then I don't like the toy. I'm gonna have it though. He's gonna stand there and be the same size as everyone else. He might even be smaller. <laughs> He's probably going to be a little bit smaller, actually, if you compare this leg to the rod here. 
He's probably going to be a little smaller. <laughs> Even though he's enormous in the show. But is that, what a fan, can do? is that a fan name? The Rod? I love that. I was <laughs> calling him The Rod. The Rod. That's what the cool kids call him. Damn, Sorry. Here comes the ride. That's his name on the streets. Alright, so would you guys recommend picking him up? Or or both figures, I guess. Would you recommend picking them up? Or would you say that like is it <coughs> worth the twenty bucks? Yeah. I'm gonna say yeah on both. I'm gonna be bold. Um Optimus is a definite, like this figure's really good if you can tolerate only another Optimus. And I've said the same thing about Siege Optimus. I feel the same way about Earthrise Optimus. They're all good figures. If you can tolerate owning a 1,000 Optimi, then you are going to have a bunch of good figures because they're all fine. Um, the Hot Rod is a, it's a harder sell because it does have some flaws that are going to really upset a lot of people. If you look at this thing that I'm displaying right now and I have him just in a very generic, like he's slashing with his fires pose, if you like him as I'm holding him up right now, then you probably want this figure. If you look at that and you think, eh, that doesn't look so great, you probably don't want it. You have to like how it came out, and it, it came out a little bit not perfect, but it's still really cool. Oh, oh that's a tough question, because I'm trying to think of it in many ways. I mean, for me, it's an obvious yes, because I, I have them all, but like I'm trying to think like for an actual review... I mean, if you are into Cyberverse, it's de- it's these are the best ones. Like you have to get these ones. You might as well if you like if you didn't like the Warrior ones, give these a shot. They're worth the extra money, in my opinion. And if you are just dabbling in Cyberverse, I mean, you're maybe fi- you're maybe fifty fifty going to be happy or disappointed. Most likely, if leaning on disappointed, if you're an older collector but if you're watching the show or have watched a few episodes and you're somewhat interested these are the ones to go with and the optimist for sure i mean i I think as we've discussed it like it's kind of just a it's an a you know it is maybe not a A plus plus but a and rodimus may be more like a b plus yeah solid b solid b the rod is a b I will say as a spoiler from when we finally get to him, that Grimlock is another A. Oh man, spoiler alert right there. Spoiler. So it's definitely another A. Love uh, an A. Alright, well, um so uh I guess I, I don't think we're gonna have any other shows this week after this, so uh it'll just be the regular TFLP on Monday night. Um so I think that's I mean, there's usually a show on Sundays. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So, uh, TF Talk News with Mr. Starscream is, uh, yeah, definitely check that out. That was a a fun episode uh, this week. They talk all about uh, canceling TFCon and whatnot. So, So, yeah, so so check that uh, that show out as as well on, on YouTube and then also on the podcast feed, so. Oh, and someday you can look forward to seeing the um, the exclusives from not TFCon that didn't happen on this show. Oh, there you someday. go. That'll be highly exciting. Yeah, I will. I will bring them if they ever no, get to my house. Sergio's been hinting at a uh, new show. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah right. very, very interesting. That's all I know. We'll, have to, we'll, have <laughs> we'll see, see if that happens. We'll have to figure that out. So yeah, um, all right. Well, um, and then also, if if you like us and what we do, consider supporting us on Patreon, patreoncom slash tflp Tears from a dollar on up, and we will uh, see you next week. So, and if you everyone. want a source of all day Transformers nerd talking, you can always join our Discord and have a live stream to our trade of consciousness robot discussions that are constantly going on. It's actually pretty fun sometimes, so I'd recommend joining if you're if, if that sounds fun to you. If that sounds miserable, probably not. I'm there. You can talk to me. You can talk to Anna. Lucas isn't there. Paul's not there. But Mr. Starscream is there. Rob is there. 
You can talk yeah, a I talk a lot, and Mr. Starscream talks a lot. Lucas, why aren't you in there? I don't know. I like was in there at the beginning, and then I just have not went back. So maybe I'll maybe I'll go back. So I'm uh, I'm just spending all my time reading Twitter about coronavirus. So. All right. Well, hi. <laughs> we'll, Can I? We'll see. See you next week. <laughs> see you on Discord. Bye. Thanks for having me.